Hello. Welcome to the Icon Virtual Health Program. How are you? My name is Barbara Ho. I'm a registered nurse. I'm a chief nursing officer of Icon Chinese Division. I'm the MC of today's event. Welcome people who join us online. Welcome to this health online forum. Healthy living, healthy heart, digital emergency medicines, which have established over 16 years, led by Dr. Ho. The purpose is to help BC multicultural groups, patients, their families, by reliable health information, community resources, and network in respect of chronic disease education, prevention, and self-management. By way of forums, health forums, workshops, and web technology to help patients with sick disease awareness, teach them best health practices to reduce disease risk, and advocate for formal therapies, and also help them access reliable health network and electronic tools, become more familiar with technology, digital technology, and how to use them for better health quality. OK, without any further delay, we would like to introduce the first speaker, Dr. Peter Ling, internal medicine, to explain what is method heart disease and what is the risk factors and how to prevent complication. Mr. Ling, Dr. Ling, thank you for coming to this forum. I leave the floor to you. Thank you, Icon, and thank you uh, to UBC uh, Emergency Digital Medicine. Thanks for your support uh, for me to talk about this topic. So today I'm going to talk about uh, an overview of heart disease uh, risks and how to prevent it. So and also prevent complications. Like uh, Barbara said, this is an invisible killer. So, but if we um, do the right thing, we can uh, prevent it. So uh, today I'm gonna talk about what heart disease is and uh, what symptoms uh, there are for heart disease and uh, what kind of signs you can expect. So let's see what about uh, the, the common um, illnesses that lead to heart disease, the, the risk factors and also the prevention uh, and how to prevent it from getting more serious. So uh, coronary artery disease, what disease, what is it? It is uh, when our, our arteries are clogged. I just know that the arteries uh, supply blood to the uh, organs uh, so, so they, they can function so that we can survive. So the uh, our arteries for the heart is called coronary artery. So if it, they are clogged and the heart may not have enough blood, so there may be anemia and there may be other uh, complications. So if, if the f f fatty tissues and all of that uh, clog the coronary artery, the blood cannot be supplied to the heart, so you will have heart disease, uh, risk of having um, coronary artery disease. And so I'm talking about the risks now, uh, for example, uh, symptoms. What kind of symptoms? So the most common ones, uh, my, the patients will feel the, uh, chest discomfort. I'm not talking about pain, but it feels like something is pressing it. Something uh, is like a heartburn feeling. Someone will tell me that the their jaws feel pressured, or maybe the arms or the back um, feel tingling. So it's not pain, it's just discomfort. So some patients may tell me that they have shortness of breath. Uh, for example, if they walk, they feel uh, they have to gasp. And if they do exercises, well, only after a short while they will start getting tired or they have shortness of breath. So you have to be careful because uh, your heart may have some problems. Of course, there are many illnesses that can cause this, but if you're careful, so I suggest uh, that you uh, seek doctor, doctor's help soon. So 
there are many ways we can diagnose uh, coronary ar artery disease. The most common way to diagnose it is to do a ECG, uh, ECG which is an electrocardiogram. The doctors will, uh, or technicians will put something around your heart, something electrodes, uh, so uh, to tell you that there is a problem with your heart. But sometimes people will tell me, I don't have a problem uh, sitting. I, only when I jog or run, then I feel um, pressure in the heart. So they may give you a stress test. What a what stress, stress test is, you just uh, get on the treadmill. But the t time that you are on the treadmill, they do uh, ECG. So when you're running, when you're jogging, they will know whether your CG chain uh, ceased ECG would change, or if you feel a uh, discomfort, and then if there are changes in the ECG, it, which may tell you that uh, you may have heart disease. Another way to diagnose it is uh, to do a echocardiogram. In English, that is called echocardiogram. So to see if your heart, the functions, or the uh, contraction uh, are normal. So if there is something abnormal, we can see it. So it's something that's easy to do. So you, the patient only have to lie down, and the technician will put some gel or some liquid to the, on the chest, and they will see the heart and then see how, uh, how the heart functions. And uh, another thing is uh, after you've done all these, and if there is a chance that you have coronary artery disease, the doctor may arrange you to uh, refer you to a specialist and do a uh, cardiac uh, catheterization. C catheterization. And so to see if, um, if the, the coronary arteries are clogged, if they are clogged, the doctor may want to treat you, uh, uh, put you on a stent. So because some, uh, somewhere it's, uh, it's um, clogged, so you have to put a stand in it to uh, uh, diagnose heart disease. So how would I know whether I have heart disease or not, whether I will have heart attack or not? Uh, I'm asked often that question. So what is a heart attack? So uh, like I said, if all of a sudden you feel discomfort in the heart, or, uh, that on top of sweating or shortness of breath or fatigue. Anyway, if you feel all of a sudden all these things, so all of the times I tell the patients uh, to consult a doctor as soon as possible. If possible, they have to call 911 to call an ambulance to take them to the hospital because uh, when a, a heart attack happens, it can be very, very serious. So so uh, you have to know what the symptoms are. And sometimes my patients are telling me, oh, maybe not, uh, maybe it's not a heart attack, Maybe something else. Well, if you're not sure, then well, don't worry. Just go to the doctor first. Even if it's not a heart attack, no one will um, criticize you. So as at least you know what the risks are, what the symptoms are. Another thing that I uh, just uh, forgot mention, forgot to mention is somebody says that the chest is uh, has discomfort, maybe nausea, maybe that's also heart attack because um, because. Uh, there are not uh, very obvious symptoms or signs f for heart disease, so you have to be, uh, don't, uh, don't overlook anything. So what is heart failure? Actually, the heart itself is a pump, so the function is to uh, pump your blood into our, uh, different organs, for example, even your muscles, your brain, and uh, your intestines and other organs, so, so it's a pump. And so if you, are, uh, you have heart failure, so if uh, there is a heart failure um, tendency, so that means the pump is not working well, that means uh, the blood is not uh, um, going forward, so it's going backward. What happens when the blood goes backwards? So you know that the heart and the lungs work together. So if it goes back, if it ebbs, so sometimes the blood will go into uh, your lungs. For example, th there's, um, uh, um, if the pump does, uh, the, the blood does not pump well, then you will have a sw swelling in the legs. There are many reasons for having swelling in the legs. It's not just heart failure. I'm not so trying to scare you. So it's not just a heart disease. Uh, heart failure, one of the symptoms is uh, swelling the feet. Uh, so you may want to consult your doctor. So 
what are the causes of heart failure? I said that there are many causes. The most common causes are uh, what for like a coronary ischemic heart disease. So uh, coronary uh, artery is to pump blood into the heart if the the the, the vessels are clogged and the, the pump starts to uh, dysfunction. So so you, it will lead to heart failure. So. Uh, yeah, so the most common cause is the coronary ischemic heart disease. Another thing is we call idiopathic, uh, idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy. Uh, so the doctor will also uh, help you to find out if you have that as well. C hypertension is another common thing. Uh, so just think that this is a pump and then there's only that much power if you have high, high hypertension. So the, if there's too much pressure on the uh, artery, so there is not enough uh, power to resist that. So uh, hypertension is uh, one of the causes. The last thing is we call the uh, valvular disease. Uh, it's at the, the, about the valves in the heart. So if it ha has any problems, it will cause uh, heart vo uh, valvular disease or uh, heart failure. If it has a problem, maybe the blood will ebb and it will flow back. So uh, this is also a common cause, and the doctors can find out uh, with uh, um, ultrasound. So what are the risk factors of heart disease? At, uh, uh, actually, uh, heart disease, uh, there are three kinds of uh, uh, heart uh, risk factors. We call it three highs in Chinese. So uh, like, for example, diabetes, hypertension, and uh, dyslip dyslipidemia. So uh, sometimes the doctors uh, will ask you, well, uh, ask, hear from the patients, how come you're so concerned about this? I, I don't have a pro any problems with any of the three highs. So, but I have a good ha appetite. I don't have uh, heart, uh, chest pain. Well, actually, if you have three highs uh, chronically, it will gradually increase your risk of having heart disease. So you have to be careful. You have to uh, try to avoid having any of these three highs. And uh, now we come to uh, diabetes. So let's talk about diabetes first. Now, what is diabetes? Well, uh, diabetes is when our body cannot normally use the glucose. So after we have uh, some sugar intake, the cells would uh, absorb the uh, sugar. But when you have uh, uh, there is a hormone inside our body called insulin. So that's, uh, created, that's uh, produced by the pancreas. So the in function of the insulin is to bring your the, the sugar into your cells, to feed your cells so that they can produce energy and make you make you work now if the body does not have enough insulin what happens is that there is called a type 2 diabetes um, so you have to have insulin injection because your body can absorb the insulin or produce enough in insulin so and the sugar accumulates in the uh, blood and that's the most common type um, um, many patients ask me, what happens when my blood sugar level is high? But I don't feel anything. I don't feel anything wrong. But the problem is here. When you have high blood sugar, uh, the, it's not good for your blood vessels. Say, for normal blood vessels, it's clean. It's very neat, tidy. Okay. But if you have diabetes, for example, if you have uh, uh, high cholesterol, when you uh, have blood sugar level, then you have uh, what we call the... Um, sclerosis of the blood vessels because the sugar can damage the uh, walls of the blood vessels. So uh, everywhere in the body there is a blood vessels because uh, it's like the, the brain, the kidneys, the, and the, also the legs. If the blood sugar level is high, it damages your, for example, if it damages the blood vessels in the brain, you may have a stroke, or if it damages the blood vessels in the heart, then you have heart disease, or if it damages your kidneys, then you have renal disease, if it damages your legs, then you may have a, uh, and then you have a blood vessel uh, disease, so, so uh, diabetes can uh, affect a lot of uh, different parts of your body. So it's not just uh, blood sugar, it's not as simple as that, it can um, affect your brain as well as other organs. 
and some patients will ask me, what are the symptoms of diabetes? Actually, I can tell you that most of the uh, patients of diabetes don't have any symptoms. Maybe their blood sugar level is a little higher, or maybe they feel f thirsty, or maybe they have frequent urination, because if the uh, blood sugar level is uh, uh, high, then you, uh, the urine will will uh, uh, bring out uh, the ex excess sugar. Some patients, if they are serious, their weight, they, they may suffer weight loss because uh, because there's enough insulin, because there's already a lot of uh, sugary substances, but the, the cells cannot absorb them, so gradually, uh, uh, so you have gain, gained loss. Also, blurred, blurred vision, because it also affects the eyes. So. Uh, rarely uh, do you have symptoms. Most of them do not have symptoms. So how do you know whether you have diabetes or not? I tell my patients that if you already have high blood pressure, if you have high cholesterol, so uh, try to talk to the doctor, uh, try to see if you're diabetic or not, or if it's hereditary, or if your family, your parents, your siblings have uh, diabetic, so you have to watch out your um, diet. Don't uh, have too much sugary intake, and so it will uh, n not increase your risk of having diabetes. So how do we know whether you have diabetes or not? Because the doctors can check it. There are two ways to check it. There's one is called A1C hemoglobin A1C test to see what is the average value. There is also called something called fasting blood sugar. There's also another thing called oral glucose uh, but because of time constraints, uh, I'm going to just uh, briefly touch on the diagnosis. So what's fasting blood sugar? Fasting blood sugar is when you have fasted for eight hours, like you don't eat breakfast when you wake up in the morning. So when you have an empty stomach, if it's still high, then the doctor will also test you one more time. If it's still over seven, there's a great chance that you may be diabetic. Another thing is called A1C, to see if the uh, hemoglobin itself, how much sh how much uh, glucose is there. So you do that every once every three months. Um, some uh, The normal is of 5.7 or lower, but if the ASL is six, over 6.5, there's a chance that he's diabetic. The last test as if somebody wants to be more accurate so the doctor will arrange for a to go to a lab and and uh, drink some very sweet uh, syrupy substance and after two hours you have a blood test if the number is over 11 it means the absorption is not good enough to um, digest the sugar so so that's diabetic di diabetes um, if it's your blood sugar level is over 11, then chances are you may be uh, diabetic. So there are three uh, ways to diagnose um, diabetes. So how do we know uh, what ways can we control diabetes? Uh, I usually tell people to check your blood sugar level at home. No, don't just rely uh, to have it done in the lab. That's not enough because you have to do it frequently at home. And uh, what do you do? Uh, what else do you do? Well, diet is also very important. Usually, I want my patients to change their lifestyle, uh, do more exercises, watch the diet. If that doesn't work, well, then take medications. And also, uh, how do you do? Uh, how do you test your blood level at home? So, I don't n n know whether you have di uh, pre-diabetes or not. Whether you have uh, serious uh, di di uh, diabetes or not, you have to test your blood sugar at home. So, the best is to keep your uh, fasting blood sugar uh, glucose between four to seven, um, and then two hours after a meal, the optimum is between six to ten. Well. Some people ask me, how, how would I know these numbers? Well, you have to check them, otherwise you will know. Some patients will ask me, well, how many times will I check? How frequently should I check? But traditionally, uh, because you poke your finger, that's a very traditional way. Uh, you have to poke it many times a uh, day because you have to poke it on, on an empty stomach and after you have a meal. So in the morning and then after every meal, after breakfast, after lunch, after lunch, so that's four times a day. A lot of people cannot do that because poking a finger is painful. For, right? and it's not convenient. If you have a meal outside, uh, it's not, it's, it doesn't look good. So, and so uh, for the past six years, there are new ways to test your blood sugar. So the one is called flash glucose monitor. It's a gadget that you put on your arm, 
there are two uh, two such uh, gadgets in BC. One is to put on your arm. One is to put on your uh, stomach. The idea the, uh, is to after you put it there, they will keep sending messages to your cell phone. Uh, for example, this uh, lady here, so she says, oh, she knows that it's 6.2 uh, uh, every uh, five minutes, uh, depending on the brand that you use. The thing is you have to, have to uh, put your finger, and and uh, another way and that's uh, better than put your finger, but it only takes one second to find out. Uh, because after you uh, poke your fing finger, then you may have to wait a long time. So this way, after one second, you will easily find out what, how high your blood sugar level is. For example, after you take a meal, after you have a dessert, or whether you have the bun, uh, or uh, it's over 10, after one hour, so you want to bring it down to uh, under six. So next time, don't eat such uh, sweet stuff as uh, a pineapple bun or whatever. Uh, so, uh, for example, if you put that in the bathtub, that's fine. If you soak it in the water, you can change, replace to anyone after 10 or 14 days. So I tell my patients to use it a lot. Another way uh, to uh, uh, another advice I give you is to watch your diet. It depends on what you put in your mouth, and that also can affect your chances of having diabetes. So it, on a plate, uh, optimally, 50% uh, should be vegetables, and 20% should be protein, and the other 25% should be carbs. So if it's carbs, uh, try, or if you have starch, try to eat whole, whole grain products. Uh, first, you eat your vegetables, 50% of the vegetables, then your proteins, and last, uh, carbs, uh, starches, because if you uh, well, well it's, of course, not so much uh, salad dressing, uh, because after you've eaten the vegetables, the, the fibers will prevent you from uh, having your blood sugar level uh, rise so much. But if you start with starches and still, uh, and then the vegetables later, then your blood sugar level will tend to rise more rapidly and higher. So. Another thing is that the fibers can fill up your stomach so you don't feel that uh, empty. So, uh, so having vegetable first and then protein and carbs, it will fill your stomach better. Now here we have uh, a, a pamphlet uh, that uh, tells you what are unrefined uh, whole grains and what are refined whole grains. Uh, this is. Uh, this uh, graphic is quite complicated. I just want you to remember one thing. Don't eat white stuff. Don't eat white ri rice, white bread, because their, their index are high. So try to select something as brown, for some brown rice or wheat bread. Uh, so we you know why brown is better, because uh, because they are fibers. The fibers, uh, they, 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 will, they will wrap up the starch in the middle. So when you eat brown stuff, and then your blood sugar level would not have rise so fast. And uh, if you eat white bread and white uh, uh, rice, and then and, uh, because it's already refined, you don't have something a uh, buffer, uh, some uh, fiber to absorb. So if you eat white bread or white rice, rice uh, uh, you will your blood sugar level will rise higher. Uh, so. And another thing is uh, taking, doing exercises, but be careful. Uh, here in Canada, um, for for heart disease index, uh, they suggest that for adults, uh, every uh, day, not every day, of course, every week, you do 150 minutes of exercises. <laughs> uh, what, what exercises do you do until you sweat? Uh, you do it until your heart beats fast? So some older people ask me, I cannot run, doctor. Uh, I'm, I'm not used to running. Well, you don't have to be so strenuous. As long as you start uh, perspiring, uh, when, you, when you're talking, it becomes not difficult, uh, that, uh, a little difficult. That's good. But you don't have to do 150 minutes in one go, because some uh, patients, they, they don't have 150 minutes in a day. So actually, it's not as good if you do it in one go. Uh, it's better to do it like 30 minutes at a time. I have. 
five times a week, so that makes that makes 150 minutes. So it's good for your uh, heart and uh, lung functions. And um, for di medications for diabetes, there are also two types. There's oral injectable. Uh, we have uh, metformin. I think a lot of people have heard about metformin. It's a very common medication, and it's also cheap. There's also uh, sulfonylurea. Uh, and and you call also this, it's also called SGLT2I. Uh, these are new medications that have been around for about 12 or 13 years, but they have good effects. So I'm sure many of you uh, in the audience have uh, heard about these medications. Uh, how about uh, injectables? In Injectables, it used, it used to be just insulin, but uh, until about seven or eight years ago, these days there are new medications like GLP-1A, you only have to do it once uh, a month, and then it, uh, and it's, you know, your blood sugar level will really improve. Uh, some of my patients, uh, on the one hand, take uh, in insulin once a uh, week, and then, uh, and then there are others that, that they uh, take other medications and they so ask what uh, was the best way to do. After uh, diabetes, uh, there is only about 10 minutes left, so I quickly I will go over the optimization of cardiovascular risk factors. For example, uh, high cholesterol. Uh, and I'm sure you know about uh, heart, good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. The two uh, types of bad cholesterol, one is called LDL, and the other is triglyceride. So these uh, bad cholesterol is actually uh, like blood sugar level. The, they, they accumulate substances and in your in your blood vessels, and, and then you clock, and you clock the blood blood vessels. Triglyceride is not good because uh, if you have too much fatty tissue, I've uh, actually a few months ago I've talked about uh, fatty issues. Now, if triglyceride is high, it will also uh, bring um, lower reaction to the like to the uh, insulin. Quickly, I will just uh, go over the dietary fats. Uh, the best thing is if you've heard about uh, unsaturated fat, okay, these are the healthiest ones. Uh, so what are the foods that are unsaturated, for example, uh, avocado, olive oil, uh, fish, uh, for example, salmon, or uh, uh, nuts, uh, so these are good. These are unsaturated fat, there's lots of them, so these are good for your blood vessels. The other, th the other thing is what uh, saturated fat, they're not as good as unsaturated fat, so don't eat as much as unsaturated fat. What are in uh, saturated fats, uh, for example, red meat, or animal internal organs, or uh, sub subcutaneous fat? Mm. Uh, for example, when you go to, uh, to have dim sum, don't eat too many of the uh, internal test organs of, uh, of uh, beef. Uh, so uh, dairy products, they are full of saturated fats. Um, you can eat them, you can take them, but not too much. At least you have some idea, especially if your cholesterol is high, you have to be careful. Uh, sorry, uh, the last thing is about trans fat. What's trans fat? Trans fat is the worst. Try not to take too much. For example, fried, deep fried foods. Uh, for example, we like to have uh, a deep fried uh, donuts, Chinese donuts, so those try to avoid them uh, because basically, uh, I mean, they've put, they've put, they've put, been put around for a long time. I mean, like those oils can be there for t one or two weeks, so try not to uh, have them because those may tend to uh, clog up your uh, blood vessels. So try to avoid them as much as possible. These trans fat co cause, uh, for example, uh, custards or uh, uh, lobster soup with the gratin, so don't try to uh, take that as much possible. Well, of course, with these days, the uh, technology and medicine and medical advancements, there are many kinds of uh, um, medications, there are the statin medications, and uh, that's not enough, then you will have to uh, acetamin, and if that's still not enough, there are also new injections, and injections uh, which will uh, lower your uh, cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, so you can ask your doctor about it. For example, if your triglyceride is high, then there is a new uh, medication, it's called I IPE, uh, icosapin ethyl, uh, so, uh, you should consult your family doctor when you want to take medication. The last thing is about 
high hypertension. Hypertension can put uh, patients at risk of heart heart attack and stroke. You know why? Because uh, actually most most patients don't know. Uh, like Barbara said, they are not aware. But then they find out, oh, their blood pressure is high. You know why it's bad for the heart? Because if you have high blood pressure, the 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 power that it takes uh, to uh, pump the blood is, is too high. So it's bad for your blood pressure. For example, if you have a pipe and you, have, uh, you, you turn on the water for a long, long time, and as, uh, until the pipe will get to, will, will tend to be damaged easier. So try not to have uh, blood pressure of, of over 140 over 90. Try to keep it as low as uh, 135 over 85. Uh, you can you can test your uh, blood pressure at a doctor's office or even at home, uh, because at home that's, that's the most relaxed atmosphere where you can uh, test your blood uh, sh sugar. So try to keep it uh, under 135 or over 85. If you have uh, if if you are diabetic, uh, try to keep it uh, as low as 130 over 80 or something. So what are the ways to uh, lower how uh, blood pressure? Try to eat less salt. Uh, don't put in uh, too much soy sauce when you eat sushi. Uh, try to lose weight. Uh, if you are overweight, then uh, lose, losing weight will help, uh, help you in that. Uh, uh, someone who snores badly, so if you have uh, sleep apnea, then you will consult a doctor, and the doctor will treat you your uh, sleep apnea. If you don't treat it well, then it will uh, bring your blood sugar, uh, blood uh, pressure high, and also try to have more fruit and vegetable and low in fat. At least do exercises for 30 minutes a day and for five days a week, if possible. For those who are taking medications, uh, try to be a good boy or good girl and listen to the doctor and don't eat, take too much uh, alcohol. When I was uh, a student, they said, oh, drink, uh, have fun. No, actually, that's not the case. If you really want to take alcohol, uh, don't drink too much because alcohol can bring up your high blood pressure. And so the important thing is that heart disease risk, risk their three highs, uh, diabetes, hypertension, and um, high lipids, so you have to be careful. If you treat them well, the chances of having heart disease will be lower. So that's my part. I'll bring the mic back to you, to Barbara. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ling, uh, for having explained so many things to us. Actually, these three highs, like you said, uh, it's, uh, they are invisible. You don't feel it, all right? So if you don't go to a doctor to test them, to uh, do tests, you won't find out. So uh, everyone should be uh, cautious. Every year, even if you don't have any pains, no, no signs, no symptoms, at least you should see a doctor to have some tests once a year and talk to your family doctor. At least you have some uh, baseline to know uh, what, what your blood sugar level is, what your blood pressure is. So thank you very much. Uh, then I'm going to introduce some of the community resources to you, which uh, Dr. Which uh, uh, Miss uh, Ascot has uh, talked about. So uh, there are many resources uh, that are uh, offered by the provincial government and the resources to uh, residents and BC. So I want to bring out uh, two of them. One of them is uh, HealthLink BC. So you can go online and uh, go to their web page. There is a lot of there's a lot of information there because today the topic is about the heart. So you can and uh, click on uh, Health Link BC uh, for heart healthy lifestyles. There are many articles on this uh, area. So I know a lot of us uh, want to know uh, what's the proper diet, what to eat, what's the right thing to eat, how much to eat, uh, when to eat, what about exercises, how to do them. So in the heart healthy lifestyle, heart health, you can click on the, uh, the eating for heart health. Uh, which tells you um, a lot of things about diet. Uh, there are many articles. There are also exercises for heart 
health is about doing exercises and uh, not only how to prevent uh, egg diseases uh, um, for, for those who have had heart surgery or uh, those who have uh, bypass surgery and all that uh, you can also uh, click on this uh, exercises area to find out what exercises exercises you can do there are also articles about hypertension uh, what, how to have a low salt diet or heart failure all kinds of articles and other articles that are in chinese and you can read those chinese when you say when you see Chinese, you just click on the Chinese um, icon, and then you will be able to read articles in Chinese. And the other uh, uh, community resource is called uh, Heart and Stroke Canada. And uh, this is uh, uh, the Chinese name is very long. So um, the uh, on the web page, you will see a, a lot of uh, uh, information uh, for everyone to share. Uh, it also talks about uh, what is heart disease, as they have a very detailed uh, explanation, uh, uh, heart functions, uh, how does the heart work, and what what are the things that uh, are characteristics of heart disease, and, and especially coronary artery disease. And so there are all, uh, all kinds of heart diseases. And uh, it also tells you, uh, for women, uh, what is a heart failure, a heart disease like in women? So there's a lot of detailed information uh, about symptoms when there's a heart attack. So you can uh, take your time and read them uh, one by one. Uh, there are many tests that your doctor may suggest that you have to go through. Uh, they also explain about those tests as well. Uh, there is a booklet called Living Well with Heart Disease. And if you already have heart disease, uh, they will tell you how to live with a heart disease, how to take care of yourself after you have had a surgery, what you have to watch out for, uh, many all the all kinds of things. They give you a very detailed information. I've clicked on it, uh, and however, this booklet is only available in English for the time being. Another thing that Heart and Stroke Canada does is CPR training. So it tell, tells you how to save lives, okay? So you can participate in that. And then you can learn how to, for example, in emergencies, how you can help a patient. So all these things, you can uh, click on those and browse and uh, just read them. Okay. Now, for the time being, so I've only talked about these two resources. I mean, there are many, many other resources that I will talk about later on. Oh, good. We let me bring back the Dr. Ling and Dr. Chang. Thank you, the two of you, to stay behind. Um, there are some people who have already some uh, put in some questions. Some of them are really uh, meaningful for some questions to be answered now. I ask those questions now. Well, I also, there are many other questions in the Q&A box. And if we are not able to finish them, we will uh, leave it back to the follow-up uh, workshop. The first question, Dr. Ling. The lung function, uh, uh, back function, uh, would that affect the heart condition? I have to talk about the, the close relationship between lung and heart. If the lung is not working well, depending on what disease, if the oxygen is not enough uh, carrying to the heart, some of the lung disease will, uh, will cause the damage to the heart conditions. Uh, well, sleep uh, uh, the apnea or the right uh, atrium would be affected too. So they are coolly related. So if they have uh, this condition, they should uh, consult uh, the doctor. Yes, uh, they are closely linked. It, so this must be follow up uh, to see how uh, what, what how progress. Doctor Ling, uh, the other question is for you too. From time to time, I have some uh, chest uh, discomfort, and 
in order to relieve, I have to take deep breath. Would that mean that the uh, uh, coronary uh, the heart really is a block clock? Well, it depends. Uh, it can maybe or maybe not. Uh, it, the best way is to go to the doctor to um, go through the e EGM or uh, and also uh, do some uh, uh, stress uh, testing uh, and also the, sometimes do you use, use the color the ultrasound test? If uh, if this friend have uh, there's a high risk uh, for heart condition like the free highs, I advise them to go to see the doctor. Well, if it would be great if it's nothing to worry about, but go there and prevent in advance. Doctor Cheng, this friend asked. Uh, What does he mean by sinus with the first degree AV block? So the heart rate is normal, but they are, I was told that there were first degree AV block. It's a normal. It's a normal result. If the sinus rhythm is an AV block, is a I've told that. Show you the diagram. The signal not to the the U.S. Uh, Canada boundary. If the conduction is slowed down, so it will be slowed down. But most of the times, it is related to age and also your medication. It's not a serious factor. So, if you can't remember anything. Because it's the first degree, it's, it's not a, only the second and the third degree is you, it may cause more concern. Dr. Chen, uh, the heart rate rhythm of about 50 or up around 50, is it a, a stroke factor? The normal uh, heart rate is 60 to 100. During sleep, it will slow down. It's normal. It's okay. Even it get to as low as 40, 50, it won't uh, have impact on the heart. Wow. Unless uh, when it is a 50, that cause you a lot of discomfort. While you're um, exercising, if you want to increase your heart rate, it's supposed to be go to 90, but it cannot reach. 90, like you are driving, you push the gas, it won't go up, unable to up, go uphill, then it should be a concern. So it, depending on the condition, if it is uh, 50 when you are stat static, then it's not a concern. I have uh, met some uh, patient, they have um, a lot of exercise and active, so their heart rate is only 40 something. What about my heart rate up to 86 to 90? Well, that's on the other side of the spectrum. If it is higher, normal people, uh, the heart rate will go up um, inherently. Well, my heart rate is 80 to 90, even though when I was uh, sitting, it's not a it's not a disease. If you have no medical condition and below 100, it's not a problem. Like what Barbara just said, uh, if you are exercising, if you say that I have to be 90, no matter what condition, when I was sleeping, when I was sitting, well, that would be a problem. Well, the electric current is not, it's not appropriately the conducting the, to give the heart a appropriate stimulate. I know most circumstances uh, below 100 or below 90 is not a, a concern. Dr. Ling, the back pain, would it have any relationship with the heart? Uh, there are many factors for back pain. With the back, you have a uh, muscle and the bulk. Most of the time, it's structural issues. But this question is a very good question. Uh, sometimes 
the coronary, coronary heart disease, one of the symptoms is the back discomfort. Some the the, the heart, artery no. If the it is swollen, then that would be pain, back pain. If the acute pain causing sweating, you have to go to the emergency room uh, because of the main artery maybe have been damaged. So if you are not sure, you have to go to see your doctor. Thank you. Another friend, I also AV block. Would it be reverse? Would it be back to the normal? And also long haul flight, would it be a concern? <laughs> I, I will let the doctor Chen answer this. If your AV block is a uh, inheritant, it, or is it aging, then it won't return back to the normal. Your car is is used that it is used that. But if it is medication called this, so you have to determine whether whether or not you are the first, first or second. Some uh, senior P, uh, uh, they have uh, dementia. They are taking medication. It may have impact. So you have to balance out whether or not it's causing some AV block. But uh, with some AV block, there's no symptom. You may be taking the chance. But most people, if it is on first degree AV block with no symptom, so it's only the EMT, uh, it won't be uh, a concern for health. It, you don't have to be over concerned. Some of the patient, uh, well, my heart uh, beat was is very irregular, sometimes fast, sometimes slow. Under what circumstances is a concern to go to see a doctor or to conduct to take some tests? Two questions to to answer. If this is irregular compared to the normal condition, well, I feel it. It was. It is so slow. It will suddenly drop. Uh, drop. If you can describe so um, radically, of course, you you need to go to uh, monitor and to take a test. Or is. Or on the other hand, it's going so fast. It's rushing. Up to. 130 or 140 without any reason. Well, if this is not uh, something that is normal, then you have to go to see the doctor and you have to ask the doctor to see, um, to go through the regular test. It's not so time consuming to take those tests. Well, under extreme cases, uh, if the patient are faint, fainting, if the electric current is so the band the the patient is collapsed and then came came back and become like it is normal. Just like when you turn off the light and in the evening and then turn it on, then if it happened like this it is a concern. So whether or not this is a electric current turn on and off without any reason. So you have to go to the doctor or the, to the hospital. Thank you. This patient has a pacemaker. Is it true that he have to change every five years? Is this process safe? Uh, if it is going to be replaced every five years, there's uh, almost a must uh, for you to have a pacemaker like an iPhone or, and you have to turn it on all the time. If you turn on 24 hours around the day, then you have to replace it every five years. Secondly, or it's an old model. So the pacemaker battery won't last too long. Uh, replacing the battery is a minor process. 
you don't have to do deal with the why. Just uh, put in a new battery with a small uh, uh, hole. Yeah, but it is necessary. This is the last uh, resort. It is for you to protect. Uh, it won't go down to 50. If you have AV block, hard block, if you don't have the pacemaker, your, your heart rate will go down to zero. So you need it. You have to replace it. Uh, with the latest uh, technology, replacing the battery is uh, nothing. It's very simple. So uh, if cardio, if it's fifty percent of uh, the cardio artery is blocked, uh, was it necessary to uh, go through the <laughs> the surgery? No, you, you should answer it, Doctor Chen. Um, uh, seventy percent. We will have to answer if it is 70 percent. If it is only 50 percent, you know, um, the Western medicine, uh, there's a cost for any uh, processes. There's a good uh, uh, complication of one and uh, 500 chance of uh, a complication for this uh, process. Most doctor will tell you that you won't worth it unless you have 70% risk and with symptom, then uh, you have to wait the uh, uh, pro and con. 50% we will go with the medication. Oh, Dr. Ling, sleep and has anything to do with the heart uh, disease? Uh, sleep and is uh, during the sleep, um, the Oxygen supply is not uh, <coughs> sufficient. The airway of your uh, respiratory system, because of the the effect, uh, it was blocked by uh, the airway uh, during the sleep. And some people will not have breathing normally and uh, snoring loudly. The body react like this. We is we try to. Uh, breathe hardly so the blood pressure will go up. Normal people, the blood pressure will go down. But people with sleep and uh, they would uh, still have high uh, blood pressure because they try very hard to breathe more in order to get more oxygen. What is the impact on the heart it is uh, high blood pressure and uh, stroke, better chance of stroke uh, without proper uh, treatment. Uh, on uh, the the vein in uh, the blood uh, in the lung will go up uh, the pressure. So uh, sleep apnea is not uh, only uh, dealing with sleep. You have to address it. So it have to to see what kind of uh, specialist. The first you have to find out whether uh, there is or not. It's not. There's a. Uh, procedure that you can uh, monitor it uh, at home to see whether or not uh, you uh, the oxygen level goes so low, then uh, the airway has been uh, blocked or not uh, flowing fully, uh, smoothly. When it is confirmed, the doctor will to, to, to get uh, a machine to put it on. Uh, if it is a fat people, reducing the weight is uh, body weight is a, a good way, and hyper pressure patients, you have to address it too. Uh, sleep and uh, people with that, uh, as indicated by Dr. Chen, he will also uh, affect the heart the rhythm. While you are not relaxing uh, during sleep, uh, the blood rhythm would be more probable. The next uh, one question that they um, have put on stand uh, eight years ago, it seemed working well. Why yeah, have to take the aspirin uh, long term? Well, the stand is could only to, uh, for the short term. It will uh, uh, clock again. So people, uh, doctor recommend aspirin or some blood thinner medication. Why aspirin is still 
uh, prescribed uh, much later, since the, that person has already been some uh, coronary disease, and the aspirin is protecting your blood vessel to long term. Not only the, pay, the section of the blood vessel where the stand was inserted, because that person has already been required to put on stand. It's uh, trying to uh, using the aspirin to keep the blood vessels uh, uh, unclogged. So aspirin is uh, has nothing to do with the stand. The situation of the patient required to taking med aspirin to mitigate the risk. So um, it is a lifelong. Uh, 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 medication, so it's uh, for protection. So to keep the blood flowing uh, fully and uh, smoothly. Okay, uh, we have a attendant attendee here who has uh, about. Uh, it's like a lotus root. Um, is there any remedy? for this problem. Dr. Chen, your turn. Uh, about uh, Dr. Ling, uh, 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 you're putting me on the spot. OK, OK, L let me answer this first. Now, usually if uh, there are areas where the blood vessel is narrow, uh, where some parts are too uh, wide, it depends on whether it's hereditary or not, but, but because um, uh, Actually, the risks are high. In other words, uh, uh, the coronary artery disease is the risk is already there. Uh, so it's not just uh, uh, as simple uh, as uh, having a s surgery. Uh, so because there is al also the high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and uh, uh, diabetes. So we want to um, stop the blood vessel from narrowing and if you keep uh, drinking or uh, smoking so there may be uh, more narrowing for that so um, dr chan do you want to add some more yes i have some something a little bit to add uh, and you're talking about uh, uh, lotus root this is the only time that i've heard the, an analogy like that atasia is different atasia is hereditary uh, meaning yeah, this the shape of your uh, artery is a little weird. Uh, some uh, some spots are narrower, some spots are wider. So it's not not the same thing. Uh, usually, when do you do it? When you uh, do a CT? So uh, by chance you may find it up, but um, rarely it's not like atasia where it's like a lotus root and you can treat it. As far as I know, uh, uh, this uh, the tear of the artery, this is not uh, directly connected unless the wider part is very, very part of more than 45 millimeters. So you're absolutely right. Um, the three highs, uh, you have to control them. Uh, don't Your blood pressure cannot be too high, otherwise it will expand further. Uh, other issues you have to uh, consider, for example, diabetes and high blood pressure. Atasia itself, um, do, do, do you need a stent? No, actually, you don't need to anything to do anything, but you have to manage the risk. So as, as long as you don't uh, let the narrow part uh, uh, blocked up or uh, the wider part getting too wide, that should be OK. OK, this is a long question. The lower cl uh, cholesterol, are the medications will help uh, maintain heart health to prevent stroke, uh, heart uh, disease, or and usually if the uh, artery is clogged, so uh, to uh, which extent would you need an angioplasty? Who should answer? Oh, other than medications, are there other uh, natural uh, ways to lower LDL? Okay, Dr. Link, fine. Now, if you already have uh, 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 blood vessel problems, uh, medications do not help 
uh, entirely. It only helps to lower uh, blood pressure, especially bad uh, cholesterol, the LDL. Uh, this is uh, one of the reasons that uh, the blood vessel is clogged. But usually, uh, uh, there's a statin, which is a type of medication that uh, will uh, um, lower your risk of your uh, blood vessel being clogged, and then uh, for us, uh, for those who have uh, coronary artery disease, this would be good for them. Or if those who have uh, heart disease, it is good for them as well. So actually, overall, uh, this is good for the heart. And these medications, uh, statin, not only lower your cholesterol, there's a protective mecha mechanism because uh, it, uh, for example, the uh, sclerosis. Uh, will uh, stop them from uh, deteriorating, and uh, so they, if you don't take those medications, the chances of being blocked are higher. So, so the coagulants that uh, are built up in your uh, blood vessels uh, won't. Um, be too bad all of a sudden. So if you have uh, medications, uh, you should take those medications. Medications control your LDL. Other than medications, what else can help? Uh, so we have talked about diet. You have to watch out for your diet, especially uh, not eat uh, too much foods that uh, too many foods that uh, have. Uh, trans trans fats like fried deep fried foods uh, because deep fried foods uh, uh, make your bad cholesterol uh, go up and also uh, saturated fats uh, you should eat more or eat some but not all for example not so much red meats uh, preferably you should eat more saturated fats and non saturated fats where like olive oil or do exercises like Dr. Chen said so doing exercises help to control your cholesterol to have control of three highs and help your heart thank you the last question uh, Dr. Chen uh, this attendee has already got uh, HU uh, fibrillation since 2001 and uh, is he has not seen a specialist ever. So is there any, he's only go, gone for updates uh, regularly. But he's on medications, as uh, Exalator, and another, he, I don't think is spelled right. But anyway, he, does he have to follow up on it? If you're already taking blood thinner, and uh, the doctor may have uh, given some thought about that to give you the appropriate treatment. Uh, for example, uh, blood thinner, uh, the, uh, the major objective is to lower the risk of having a uh, stroke. But most patients don't really have to see a specialist, but preferably they should regularly uh, uh, check their medications. For example, if you are taking blood thinners, are there any um, complications? Are the heartbeats uh, irregular? Are they, too, are they too fast? Are there other symptoms? Uh, also, um, regular check of your kidney functions. Uh, b because the, the dosage depends on your kidney functions. And s over two so many years, have you done the colorful uh, sonic uh, ultrasound? And uh, because if you don't check your heart functions, you don't know how your function level is. Maybe you have already got uh, failure, uh, so you, you don't feel it. Well, at least there is uh, the basic ultrasound. And if the family doctor has given it some thought, then you should also see a uh, specialist. But yes, someone has to follow up on it, right? Correct. Every six months to a, a year, so you have to at least go and check your the status of your condition. There should be a there should be there should be a specialist who is dedicated to this. So, uh, so it's a chronic disease. So you have to s sit down with a specialist for 10 to 15 minutes to talk about this. So because of time constraints today, uh, that's all the qu answers we can, that's all the questions that we can answer. Those we have not answered, well, hopefully in the near future, we will have another webinar to uh, answer those questions. Now, I thank uh, Dr. Ling and Dr. Chen especially Dr. Chen, who is uh, in Hong Kong to uh, do this talk, uh, uh, their pre presentations with us today, and provided so much, share with us so much information, as well as community resources. 
So I hope that everybody will fill out the uh, survey questionnaire, complete it, and uh, if you have not, uh, you're not on the mailing list of, on the email list, well, you can scan it, scan me, look at the QR code, and then become a ma part of our uh, mailing list, and we will tell you what our next activities are. So we hope we thank uh, our partner Patients as Partners Initiative, and, um, and we we'll also uh, thank our uh, partners in the community, uh, so many of them, and uh, to support us, to help us. And we also appreciate our media partners' help to help us promote this event and also uh, Tell us, publicize this event. We also thank uh, the uh, viewing hubs, uh, uh, those organizations that uh, happen that uh, organize viewing hubs. There are four of them: CRC Health Center, South Vancouver Neighborhood Health Success, and Villa Cathay Care Home. I thank you all and uh, thank those attendees who are here in live, and uh, especially the three speakers, Dr. Ling. Uh, uh, Dr. Ho and Dr. Chan, thank you very much for taking your time and uh, share such uh, valuable information with us. We also thank our interpreters, uh, Shiny, Wenhui, and Cliff, and Rifek. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> and <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> We have more um, presentations, but for today, this is the end of our presentations. After all, presentation is better than treatment. So maintain good health while you're still young. So even if you can treat it, it doesn't mean that it's better than preven prevention. So while you're young, while you still have a chance to learn more, about chronic diseases.